Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise King Jesus. It's so good to be alive, to be on air again with another installment in our series of deliverance. Um, we are moving forward as the Lord guides us and leads us. And so today should be installment number three. Uh, sometimes I lose count, so you guys help me stay uh, uh, stay on course there. Um, it's another good installment from the Word of God, and so let's pray and get started right now and um, see what God has for us to cover today. Amen. Father, in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus, we praise you, uh, we worship you, we honor you, we thank you for your goodness, thank you for your faithfulness, thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come on air today to share your word. Lord God, as we proceed, we ask for your wisdom, we ask for your uh, Holy Spirit to give us understanding and guide us in all things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I hope you're doing okay. I'd appreciate some feedback on the comments if you're getting this right. Uh, somebody says they're not seeing the video yet. Um, um, I'd appreciate someone else saying what they're seeing or not seeing. Uh, I don't want to go too far if we're not very well connected. So... I know I've been having internet issues at my house today. The winds have been strong, but um, I trust that we can we can still be able to achieve our goals for today. So with that, I, I, I'm just checking my phone here and I think we are on. So with that, let's move right into it. Installment number three today, the lesson is um, what are some of the things that we need deliverance from, right? That's always important to know because it's easy to talk about deliverance, deliverance, and not really know where we stand uh, individually. Uh, for one thing, we talked about deliverance being the act of being rescued from danger or from bondage. And we saw that the whole world and much of what happens in the world is under the sway of the enemy. It's under the influence of the enemy. It's under the control of the enemy uh, because Adam relinquished the power and the authority to rule and reign on earth as God had initially planned for him to. And last time we talked about how the only way out of this is to call upon the name of the Lord and that the Lord is our rock. The Lord is our deliverer, Jehovah Suri. And so we call upon him and we are saved. When we call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be delivered. When we call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be rescued out of the danger that the enemy would have otherwise kept us in. And so as we move forward today, um, let me just say everyone needs deliverance in one form or another. Whether you were born in church or not, whether you were brought up in a Christian home or not, whether you are educated, not educated, whether you partake of Christianity as, as a faith or some other religion, everyone, everyone needs deliverance. And so for those of us out there who do not think deliverance is important, who question the very ministry of deliverance, let me just forewarn you here. The very fact that you don't believe in it, you need deliverance. Because when Jesus showed up on the scenes, he rescued people out of danger. He rescued people out of the bondage and oppression that the enemy had, he had them under. And if Jesus could minister deliverance to people, who are you and I to question the validity of deliverance? Who are you and I to question the very power and authority of Jesus Christ over the power of Satan? By the virtue of questioning it, you need deliverance. So every one of us, regardless of your 
your socioeconomic status, regardless of where you are born, regardless of what language you speak or don't speak, we all need deliverance. That said, though, there are some special situations that often people will, will jump to, to say, oh, that person needs deliverance. Yes, there are some special situations that need a different level of anointing and operation to rescue the people that are in those situations. However, all of us need deliverance. Okay. So what are these, some of these special situations, uh, addictions, some people are addicted to food and, and before you, before you say anything about that, or before you turn off your video and your phone or whatever you're watching this, yes. And let me just speak from a medical standpoint. There are people who are addicted to foods, whether they are sugars, carbs, fats, whatever addiction of any kind addiction in any form is a form of bondage is a grip of the enemy. And anybody who is addicted in any way needs deliverance to be rescued from that bondage. If you cannot do without chocolate, it's a bondage. Man shall not live by chocolate alone. If you somehow feel like you can't live without chocolate, it's a bondage. Some people are addicted to carbs. It's a bondage. You need to be able to live your life without carbs. You can praise the Lord. If anything keeps you in a hold to where you can't function without it, it's a form of bondage. The only thing that needs to have us to where we can't function about without it is God himself. He is the one who sustains us. He is the one who keeps us. He is the one who provides for us. The poets in Acts, I believe it was in Athens. I could be wrong on this. They, they wrote on one of their, on one of their stones in their city. In you, we live, we move, and we have our whole being. The only thing or entity or person or power that ought to have that position in your life is God himself. If anything else in your life has such a hold on you to where you feel like you cannot do without it, you need deliverance and I need deliverance. So food, alcohol, you know, and, and, you know, in the medical world, we always talk of addictions as, you know, a perpetual compulsive use or of something, uh, in spite of the detriments of using that thing. So some people use alcohol addictively. They perpetually use it, even though they're in trouble with the law, they can continue to use it, even though they're in trouble at home, they're sleeping too much, not working, not providing for their family, spending all the money in the bars, perpetual problems. And yet they continue to use that substance. It's a form of bondage needs deliverance. Drugs go into that category. Sex goes into that category, even certain emotions. There are people who feel like they can't live life without being angry. An anger emotion, a fear emotion that has you with such grip that you can't do life without it. You're perpetually under the weight of that thing, the desire to go have that thing, the compulsion to seek that thing in spite of the danger that might pose. That is a form of bondage that needs to, you need to get delivered from. So that's just one addictions of any kind, any form. Number two, emotional or mental turmoil. And we could go on on this for a long time, but if your mind, if, if you have an unsound mind where you are feeling crazy, your, your thoughts are racing and you cannot control them. You're having intrusive thoughts, either threatening you or in some way or another, making you feel like, like you, you are not yourself or that you can't live life or that you would rather die than be here. Those kind of thoughts, that turmoil that that's causing in your mind, it needs deliverance. 
Now, again, from a medical standpoint, people can have depression, people can have, you know, schizophrenia, they can have all these mental issues and sometimes related to, to drugs and alcohol and other forms of, of, of demonic things. But, but even that, we, we can medicate to some degree. We can sedate, we can tranquilize, we can in some way or another put some form of control on those thoughts and emotions and, 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 and feelings to some degree. We can even physically subdue in certain situations. If someone is posing a danger to themselves or to the, to, 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 to the others around them, we can physically subdue them. We can chemically subdue them. But that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being freed from this mind and from these thoughts that are so tormenting such that you don't even need medications. Jesus delivers from that. Think about the man in the Gospels who is so tormented that he's spending his life in the tombstones. He's cutting his flesh with stones. He's naked regardless of how cold it is around him. That man is tormented. And yes, that is probably the extreme situation. There are many, there is a gradient of that. There is, there is a, a, a continuum, if you will. There may be people who are just only slightly oppressed. Maybe when they are home alone, that's when they have these thoughts of, of whatever. Or maybe when they're around people, you know, agoraphobia. When they go out in the public, in the park, or to the grocery stores, that's when they have this torment. Let me tell you something. If, if you're having any of these fears and phobias and uncontrolled mind, and you're even making wrong decisions that end, lead you into trouble or cause you to lose some things, that mind needs deliverance. That heart needs deliverance. These are special situations. Number three. <sighs> Unexplained or generational diseases and infirmities. You know, I, you, we have these people that, you know, may be sick for a long time and they've been to one doctor after another and never finding a diagnosis. And sometimes I see some of them and, um, um, you know, they've had every test imaginable. They've gone to every specialist imaginable and it still can't be diagnosed and cannot be controlled or, tr or treated. Some of these situations need deliverance. Maybe all of those situations need deliverance. Unexplained deaths, unexplained destructions, you know, some people just have one calamity after another. Evil befalls them one after another. These are special situations in which people need deliverance. Not every headache needs deliverance, but some headaches need deliverance. Not every stomach problem needs deliverance, but some stomach problems need deliverance. When you're perpetually under torment with sickness and infirmity, and especially if it cannot be explained otherwise, and especially if it's generational, grandma had it, dad had it, now I have it, now my son has it, those generational things. I'm well aware of, of inheritable conditions from the DNA level, but I'm also aware that some of these traumas in our past and things in our generation's past can actually be written deep down to your DNA level and you pass it on generation after generation. And some of these things need deliverance. You need rescuing by the blood of Jesus. You need rescuing by the power and authority of the name of Jesus. Medicine won't do it. Psychiatrists won't do it. Any other specialist won't do it. We actually need to understand that there are some sicknesses and infirmities that are propagated by demonic activity. And the only relief from it is the name of Jesus. 
Number four, special situations that need deliverance. Special situations that need deliverance. Number four, a love for sin and iniquity and the works of the flesh. Things that God hates and yet you find yourself loving them. Things that God clearly outlines in his word to not partake of them. And yet you find yourself loving them and longing for them. That is a root of iniquity that needs deliverance. That is a power and a stronghold of darkness. Remember, it is in the Lord we live. It's in him we move. It is in him we have our whole being. Well, we cannot be in him because in him is no darkness at all. And if we're going after things that are in the dark, then we are not in the Lord. That means our life is taken from us. Our sustenance is taken from us. Our protection is taken from us. A love for sin and for iniquity. A love for the things that disgust God. A love for the things that God hates needs deliverance. No, I am not blaming you for loving those things. But I am telling you, you need deliverance. You have an answer. You have a solution. It's in the name of Jesus. It is in the salvation given by the Lord God Almighty. You do not have to continue to love sin. You do not have to continue to go after things that dishonor God. Yes, addictions is one of them. But sexual perversion is another. Of all forms. From bestiality to homosexuality to whatever. If God says it is dishonoring, it is dishonoring. We don't have to debate about that. I understand that's how you feel about it. I understand, but you know what? God can rescue you from that. Things that dishonor God. And, and let me just read through some of this in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 and 21, through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, lewdness, I, I'm sorry, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is the word of God. This is not my word. This is not my law. This is not my principles. This is straight out of our maker's word. And the word says... They that practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It would be unloving of me to let you continue in a way that would cause you to be eternally separated from God. It would be unkind of me to not warn you. Paul here says, I tell you, as I told you beforehand, they that practice these things and any such thing like this, that means this is not the whole list. This is not all of them. There are many others we could talk about. He just gives us examples. That's not the whole list. And, and let me tell you this. Scripture says in the last days, people will continue to invent sin, invent evil. There are things that exist today that did not exist in the time of Paul. Because they've been invented in our time. Some sins have literally been manufactured and cooked up in our time. They would go right into this list, right into this bucket. The word of God is very clear. And, and, and many times when we start touching on these things, people feel condemned and people feel that, that uh, Christians hate on them. Let me tell you this. This is the most loving thing I could do for you. This is the most down-to-earth thing I can do for you. Warn you. Warn you of danger. 
and offer you a solution. It's one thing to warn, but it is meaningless to warn someone if you cannot give them an answer, if you cannot give them a solution. What good is a warning if you can't provide an answer and a solution? So here's the answer. Hear me. Here is the answer. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus Christ. He died and he rose again and he ascended. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father on high, interceding for us. His name is Jesus. He is the high priest of our faith sitting in the very presence of God, sprinkling the mercy seat of God with his very own blood. This is the only answer. This is the only remedy for sin and for iniquity and for the works of the flesh. Number five, what else, Rose, is a special situation that needs deliverance? Poverty. Poverty. An ongoing lack an ongoing insufficiency. It's, it's, it's okay to lack something once in a while. It's okay. And, and, and when, I, when I talk about this, I'm not talking about the other extreme. I'm not saying we all need to be filthy rich. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking, because some of these filthy rich people are actually oppressive. And, and they are loaded with greed. And their lifestyle will come right back into the works of the flesh. But I'm talking about having sufficiency for your need. It is not okay for you to lack food every night. It is not okay for you to not have good clothes every day. It's not okay for you to lack, for your children to lack, your grandchildren to lack. It is not okay. Generational poverty, perpetual lack and insufficiency needs deliverance needs deliverance yes the bible says man shall not live by bread alone yes that doesn't mean we shouldn't eat by bread alone it means we need bread most days most days over in matthew when the lord is talking and, and, and he says do not fear or worry about what you'll eat or drink or, or clothes he knows we need these things he in fact, scripture says, your father knows you need these things. You need food. You need clothing. You need shelter. If you live in a big city, Dallas, and sometimes even small city like where I'm at, we're car dependent. You need a car. That doesn't mean it needs to be a Tesla. It doesn't mean it needs to be one of those Rolls Royce. But you need transportation. And when you are perpetually in a place of lack in your children, in your grandchildren, in the next generation, that needs to be broken. It needs deliverance. Glory to God. And he is the answer. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. He has come to give us understanding. He has come to rescue us out of danger and out of the stronghold of the evil one. And as I finish, I have our last verse there today, Ephesians 6 and 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the day, I mean in the evil day, and having done all to stand. When we are faced with these things in our lives, when we are faced with murders, you know, you could be walking down the street and somebody will put a gun to you. When we are faced with drunkenness, there are so many drunk drivers on the roads. The other day, my son was asking me, why don't they just legalize marijuana, for example? And this is debatable. I believe that there are some medical uses for marijuana, but not everybody needs to be smoking that pot. Not everybody needs to be putting that weed into their mouth, into their lungs. And that's just one example. And so I say, look, we're already having enough problems with alcohol. We're already having enough problems with nicotine, cigarettes and cigars. We're having enough problems with vapes. You want to add to that? Marijuana? Come on, guys. Are we thinking straight? Are we thinking right? 
Yes, I know people will always try to circumvent the law. I know people will always try to jump the fence. I know that. But we're not going to just legalize things just to appease people. Things that are already causing problems. I don't have any problem. Well, in a way I do. If you're going to drink yourself to sleep, that's a problem. But you know what? At least you're not on the roads. The problem is we can't keep all the drunks off the roads because they have their rights. Yet their rights are killing people. Hmm. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You and I will not survive and live in this day without the whole armor of God the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of the readiness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and prayers and all intercession in the spirit, praying for all the saints. We need to be doing all that to be able to stand. When we are spending time with God in prayer, he's going to illuminate our understanding. We will know exactly what things we ought not to partake of that bring us under, under bondage. When the devil came to arrest Jesus through Judas and the Pharisees, Jesus looked at the disciples and says, now the hour, the, the, the hour of the wicked one has come, something to that effect, but, but he has nothing of his in me. Can the enemy find something that belongs to him in you? Then you need deliverance. Then I need deliverance. If the enemy can rightfully find something that belongs to darkness in us, who consider ourselves and call ourselves people of light, we need deliverance. We need to be rescued from that power. We need to be rescued from that grip. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. And as I finish up, thank God for a lesson like this. Thank God for a word like this. I know sometimes it can be hard and not easily acceptable by many, but those that God has purposed to touch their hearts. Father, I pray, let this word settle in their hearts. Let this word settle in their minds to meditate upon it day and night. Lord, I pray that this word will bear fruit in our lives. Lord, so that we are freed from bondage and so we can help others be freed from bondage. Lord, help us in the name of Jesus to identify those situations in our lives that need deliverance and run to you for it. Help us, God, to put on the full armor of God to be able to withstand the evil days in which we live. Help us, dear God, to call upon your name and be saved. We love you and we bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, dear ones, God bless you. God willing, we'll be here again next Sunday with another installment on deliverance. Bye-bye.